I actually can't wait to show you guys around the city because it's so, it's so different to Almaty. Yeah. It feels like a utopia. Yes. We're speaking in a pyramid just in front of us. <laughs> Morning guys, it is the next day and we are currently making our way back to Almaty. But on the way, we've discovered that Kazakhstan has its very own Grand Canyon. It reminds us a lot of the one in America. We're currently standing in the middle of it. Which we didn't do in America because it's so big. So it's <laughs> nice to just be able to walk through here and just see the towering red and orange rock surrounding so, us. Jeep casually coming through. <laughs> you could not do that in the Grand Canyon. <laughs> <laughs> So we've just been on a two kilometer hike through the canyon and we heard that at the end there's this beautiful river that you can go to but we didn't realize that they've actually built an eco park and you can stay in either a bungalow or a yurt in the middle of this canyon i feel like if we knew about this we totally would have spent the night but we need to show you because we actually haven't been able to see a yurt up close and i feel like if you were coming to kazakhstan and you want to stay in a yurt this could be a cool place to experience that I wish you could be saying welcome to our home for the next night, but I'm sure we can probably sneak in and still show you around. This almost looks like a mini oasis coming from that desert over there <laughs> and then having this <laughs> really cooling water right in front of it. That's so nice and refreshing. So that's the canyon we walked through. There's the bungalows just over there, the river. And if you come to the left here, there are the yurts. And look at this right in front of the canyon that is so picturesque all righty so we're going to cheat a little bit we found out there are these little jeeps that can make us skip the 40 minute walk or we'll just kind of cruise through the canyon i love how they look like the seats on a bus just stuck onto the back of a van <laughs> i feel like it's just a bus yeah, missing missing the roofing <laughs> and the walls and the seat belts and the safety <laughs> That's the better way to see the canyon. One, two, wait, wait, wait. How do we say in Russian? Raz, two, three. Woo! Cheers! Cheers! No, it's just. Oops. Oh my. <laughs> Cheers! So after about three hours of driving, we have finally made it back into Almaty where it all began. And I feel like we didn't even show you guys the city because when we arrived five days ago, it was like at six in the morning and then we started our tour at eight. So we just blacked out for at least that morning. But we just came back into the city. I definitely think we're gonna show you guys around and then end our day. We're gonna have a traditional Kazakh dinner at this nice little restaurant here. And we're gonna show you some of the fruits we're gonna have. Alrighty, we've just been given our dish. This is a local vegetarian Kazakh dish. It is called Oroma. And I think it's like a Kazakh pasta. And they make it look like a little flower. And it looks like it is filled with potato, tomato and onion. Oh, that looks pretty good. I don't think I've seen a dish prepared like that before. Yeah, especially a pasta dish, hey? <laughs> it's really good. It's really good? Yeah, it's like, um, kind of reminds me of like a veggie lasagna. Yeah? Because it's like that layered kind of pasta. That's kind of cool. But you should tell them your fun fact about the apples. Oh, yes. Yeah, so really I worked just learned that. So before our dish came out, we were given some local bread, which is nice. We also have a salad just here and a fruit salad. And fun fact, fun facts with Stephen, El Maddie, so the city that we're currently in, means the father of apples because they claim that this is the birthplace of apples, which I thought was kind of cool here in Kazakhstan. So we've just come out to our first spot and it's this absolutely beautiful 
Russian Orthodox Church and it was just recently renovated two weeks ago. It's as if they knew we were coming because they put a fresh coat on it. It's yellow, it is so colorful, but you're probably wondering why is there a Russian Orthodox Church here in Kazakhstan? But if you guys didn't know, in the 18th century, Kazakhstan actually joined the Russian Federation. So if you're thinking, what do the people sound like here in Kazakhstan when you're walking around trying to paint a picture for you guys? Everyone speaks in either Russian or Kazakhstan. Of course, in the cities, they speak more Russian. When we're out in the countryside, they'll speak in Kazakh or Russian. So it's really interesting being here in Central Asia and everyone having a thick Russian accent. But the architect studied in St. Petersburg, so you obviously can see where he got his inspiration from because this building is so beautiful. And if you saw our Russian series, you will know what we mean about their Russian churches just being marvels to look at. little cookies but this area is kind of broken up into three sections so in one section they have all the dried spices and fruits and then in the middle they have all the fresh fruit and vegetable and then in the back they have all the meats and it looks like it's just all local people coming and buying stuff here but cheers yeah locally brewed Kazakh coffee yeah that's good that's good yeah. also how homemade does this cookie look so a lot of the traditional Kazakhs are nomadic people and of course they can't just take milk with them because they're always on the move. So what they'll do is they'd make a lot of their desserts from milk-based products and then store them. This is pretty much the most purest form, so there's no sugar in there. It's called eromshik. I'm gonna give it a try, just fresh from the market. That's not too bad actually. So they've added like a honey to it, so it almost tastes like a sweet cheese, like a sweet halloumi. This is the perfect snack to have. I think we found the best place to watch the sunset and see the city. We just found this gondola really close to where we are staying and we took it up. And it kind of takes you to, it's kind of like a little amusement park kind of thing up on a hill and it overlooks the entire city and from here you can really see how short most of the buildings are here in Almaty because this is a big earthquake place so they don't really tend to build their buildings very high and it's so flat here as well you can see so far out it's like yeah. us are mountains like snow-capped mountains so one side you see this big flat city and on the other side are mountains that you can go skiing But it is now the next day and we really just had the afternoon here in Almaty and we're about to fly to another major city to the capital to Nur Satan. So we've just arrived at the Almaty airport, gonna catch a two hour domestic flight up to the north to go continue exploring. Thank you. So we're flying Kazakh Air and it's only a two hour flight which means they've just got this little propeller plane, aeroplane. They know. make me nervous. Do they? Yeah. Oh, it'll be fine, we're flying over land. <laughs> Welcome to Nur Satan or Astana, the capital of Kazakhstan. Guys, we just oh. got to our hotel. It's super nice. Guys, driving into the city, it feels like a little bit like we're in Dubai. It is so different to Al Madi. Let's have a look. So this is our bathroom just here. Wow, this is super nice. We're staying at the Rixos, right in the city centre. I actually can't wait to show you guys around the city because it looks so 
different. It's so different to Almaty. Yeah, it's like so weird because we've just come from like lakes and mountains and little villages and now we've just rocked up in this full on like, it feels like a futuristic city. I was not expecting this in Kazakhstan. But we're actually here in the city for a very special reason and it's something we've never done before, but we're exhausted from that flight. So we'll see you guys in the morning and we'll tell you more about it. So now we can tell you why we are here. There is actually kind of like a travel expo at the moment here in Kazakhstan and we are going to be speakers at it and it is held inside this pyramid. The buildings here are unreal. Yeah, it's so cool. This is kind of like the Kazakhstan version of VidCon, I suppose. So there's a bunch of people here who do YouTube, Instagram from all over the world. Yeah. Russia, like I just met Italy. people from Finland. Which is... Yeah. It's, it, honestly, this feels almost like an emotional day because it's... It's so cool. I remember four years ago, we were attending VidCon and going up and watching all these speakers and now it's kind of come full circle. Yeah, like, now we're going to speak, speak in Kazakhstan of all places. But this place, we're going to do a city tour this afternoon. It feels like a utopia. Yes. We're speaking in a pyramid just in front of us. <laughs> <laughs> this building is so unique, this pyramid structure and this event is super well organized. I think we're just like in the middle of it just here and they have different conference rooms, different breakout rooms. We're gonna go see the main stage pretty soon. Steven and Jess Perry, Valentine, Canal, Fly the Left, Australia. We're backstage. We are backstage. Oh wow, the stage is just over there. I know. What? You're gonna do so well though. <laughs> so currently on a panel with some other Instagrammers. We've got Jennifer just here. We've got a Russian YouTuber as well. We're about to go do our first talk. It's on how to make money while traveling. And hopefully we'll try and get some snippets for you guys so we can uh, show you what it's like. But yeah, this is exciting. It's our very first ever talk. <laughs> I'm not very good at public speaking. <laughs> <laughs> like a topic but we don't exactly plan what we're going to say because we want it to be authentic and in the moment and capture moments of travel but we yeah, come up with a, a purpose for the video. So for day one of the conference we had an opening ceremony where everyone was introduced who's going to be talking at the forum and also they mentioned the schedule so it was really nice because we got to go into the main stage we had some topics that were discussed but now they've kind of broken for half the day and they're going to take us around the city of Astana. Pretty much going to see what you can do here in the city, which is, I still can't believe how they've designed it. And the first spot we've come to is a mosque and it's an incredible white mosque with gold finishings. We have all these tiles just here. They're going to show us around, going to learn more about the mosque. Take you around because it is so beautiful. So we've just come inside, of course, because it is a mosque, we do just need a cover up. So they've given us these garments. So beautiful. Wow, look at this chandelier as the centerpiece for the entrance. So it's the largest mosque in Kazakhstan. So this is the Hazrat Sultan Mosque and what you're going to learn with this city is it had a lot of advances in the last 10 to 20 years where they just built a lot of structures. So this one was built in 2012, so it is actually quite new. It has four minarets, a gigantic dome, which you can see here. And of course, it's built in a traditional Islamic structure. But it's so unique with all this marble and also the green as well gives it like a different look because we've been to a few mosques around the world and this one's definitely quite unique. Also, leave a comment if you know this but I don't think I've ever seen a chandelier in the middle of a mosque before. If it is common, let me know below. I'm just not sure if I've seen one inside a mosque before. So we are currently driving around this city and we have not seen anything like it. So we go to this beautiful mosque and they drive past a building that looks like the Arc de Triomphe, then all these very fancy apartments. And now we have come to a gigantic glass ball. It's kind of like Epcot, but it's a marble. 
We were saying that it kind of looks like what they got was like 50 different architects and told them to all come to the city and just all build whatever they wanted. It's just like a bunch of everything. So the big giant marble was actually built for the World Expo which was held here in 2017 and if you're wondering what that is, the Eiffel Tower when it was originally built was built for a World Expo in Paris. But now we've kind of come to our final spot to watch the sunset. We're inside the Batarek Tower and this is probably one of the most famous towers in all of Kazakhstan and you can go right up to the top inside the big giant gold bowl you get really beautiful panoramic views of the city. I can see the pyramid where we're speaking at, I can see the government buildings, I can see a lot of the unique architecture that we've pretty much been showing you throughout the entire day. And it's just a perfect spot to watch the sunset and the sunsets here in Kazakhstan have been pretty